Welcome everyone. Today we dive deep into the world of water, an element vital for our survival. In this journey, we will explore the invisible threats that lurk in our drinking water, threats that can have serious implications for our health and well-being. From our kitchen taps to the wells in our backyards, water sources are under constant assault from a variety of contaminants. Some of these threats are known and regulated, like the pear and polyfluoroalkyl substances, better known as PFAS. There's a growing concern about these chemicals because they are widespread in our environment and can accumulate in our bodies over time, leading to a range of health issues. Then there's fluoride, a substance added to our drinking water with the intention of improving dental health. Yet, there's an ongoing debate about its safety and potential health impacts. Water, a resource we often take for granted, is also becoming a weapon of environmental and economic warfare particularly against farmers. A struggle for water rights is leaving many farmers high and dry, with devastating consequences for their livelihoods and our food supply. Our tap water, though convenient, is not without its risks. Chemical contaminants, microbial pathogens, and the impact of aging infrastructure can all compromise the safety of our drinking water. And in this digital age, even our municipal water systems are not immune to cyber attacks, which can disrupt water supply and treatment processes. For those of us who like to be prepared, there are strategies we can adopt to ensure our drinking water is safe. From storing water and investing in high-quality filtration systems, to boiling water and using purification tablets, there's a lot we can do to protect ourselves and our families. Water is life, yet it can also bring risks. It's important we stay informed and prepared. In the following scenes, we'll delve into these topics in more detail, equipping you with the knowledge and strategies to ensure your drinking water is safe. Have you heard of PFAS? It's a group of man-made chemicals that have been found in our drinking water. PFAS, or per- and polyfluoroalkyl substances, are a family of chemicals used in a wide range of products for their water and grease resistance. They've been dubbed forever chemicals because they don't break down naturally and can accumulate over time. Now the Environmental Protection Agency, or EPA, has established new limits for these chemicals in our drinking water. The agency has lowered the health advisory levels for two types of PFAS, PFOA and PFOS, to 70 parts per trillion. That might sound like a small number, but when you consider that these chemicals can linger in our bodies and the environment for years, it's a significant reduction. Despite these new limits, PFAS are still prevalent in many U.S. water systems. In fact, they've been detected in the public water supplies of more than 600 locations across the country. And that's just where we've looked. Many areas have yet to be tested. The health implications of PFAS exposure are concerning. Studies have linked these chemicals to a variety of health problems, from high cholesterol and thyroid disease, to kidney and testicular cancers. Pregnant women and infants are particularly vulnerable. Legal actions are being taken across the country against manufacturers and users of these chemicals, and they could result in significant compensation for affected families. However, these cases can take years to resolve, and the health effects can be long-lasting. The cost of reducing PFAS levels in water systems can be steep. Treatment technologies exist, but they're expensive to implement and maintain. Communities already struggling with aging infrastructure and limited resources may find it difficult to afford these solutions. The PFAS issue is a daunting one, but being aware is the first step towards protection. By understanding the risks, we can make informed decisions about our water and push for stronger regulations to keep our drinking water safe. After all, clean water isn't just a luxury, it's a necessity. Another controversial element in our drinking water is fluoride. This naturally occurring mineral has been added to community water systems for over 70 years in a public health initiative to prevent tooth decay. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, or CDC, is planning to extend this fluoridation to reach nearly 77% of Americans' drinking water. Sounds great, right? Well, not so fast. As with many things in life, there's another side to this story. Some folks question the safety and health impacts of fluoride in our drinking water. These concerns stem from studies that suggest excessive consumption of fluoride may lead to various health issues, such as dental fluorosis, a cosmetic condition affecting the teeth, skeletal fluorosis, a bone disease, and even potential neurological effects. The key term here is excessive consumption. The current standards for fluoride concentration in water are designed to keep levels safe yet effective for dental health. But what if you're consuming more than the average amount of water? 
Or what if your diet already includes other sources of fluoride, like tea or seafood? This is where the debate heats up. Some argue for the complete removal of fluoride from water supplies, citing the potential health risks. Others point out that fluoride is a cheap and effective way to combat tooth decay, especially in communities where dental care may not be easily accessible. There's also a question of choice. Shouldn't we get to decide what goes into our bodies? After all, you can always add fluoride to your water if you want it, but you can't easily take it out if you don't. These debates have sparked ongoing research and discussions about the best way forward. In the meantime, if you're concerned about fluoride in your water, there are several filtration systems available that can reduce or eliminate it. Fluoride, a friend or foe, the debate continues. Tap water, a convenience we all appreciate, but what risks does it carry? Our tap water, often crystal clear and seemingly harmless, can sometimes carry unexpected house guests. Chemical contaminants like pear and polyfluoroalkyl substances, or PFAS for short, lead and heavy metals can lurk in our water supply. These contaminants can originate from various sources, including industrial and agricultural runoff, corroded plumbing systems, and even the process of disinfecting the water itself. PFAS, often referred to as forever chemicals, are particularly concerning due to their resistance to breaking down in the environment and within our bodies. Exposure to these chemicals can lead to a plethora of health issues, including hormonal disruptions and increased risk of certain cancers. Lead and other heavy metals, on the other hand, can cause neurological issues, especially in children, and can damage vital organs when consumed over an extended period. But it's not just chemicals that pose a threat. Microbial pathogens such as Cryptosporidium, E. coli, and Legionella also pose significant risks. These microscopic organisms can cause a wide range of illnesses, from minor gastrointestinal discomfort to life-threatening conditions such as Legionnaire's disease. And let's not forget about the role that aging infrastructure plays in the quality of our tap water. The United States relies heavily on an aging network of pipes and treatment facilities, many of which were installed over a century ago. These old systems can crack and break, allowing contaminants to seep into the water supply. Additionally, outdated treatment processes may not effectively remove modern contaminants, leaving us exposed to potential health risks. So, while it's easy to turn on the tap and not give a second thought to what's flowing out, it's important to remember that not all water is created equal. It's crucial to stay informed about the potential risks in your local water supply and take proactive steps to ensure the water you and your loved ones are consuming is as safe as it can be. The tap water we take for granted may not always be as safe as it seems. In the digital age, even water isn't safe from cyber threats. It's a chilling thought, isn't it? Our water systems, a vital lifeline that we often take for granted, are becoming increasingly vulnerable to the dark underbelly of the internet. So what kind of cyber threats are we talking about? Well, it can range from ransomware attacks that can lock out water system operators, to data breaches that can expose sensitive information. The end goal of these attacks is usually to cause disruption, demand ransom, or worse, to sabotage the water supply. The operational risks associated with these attacks are sobering. Imagine, if you will, a hacker gaining control of a city's water treatment processes. They could shut down the system entirely, leaving residents without water. Or, they could manipulate the treatment process, leading to a dangerous change in the water's chemical composition. A recent example of this was the cyber attack on a water treatment plant in Florida, where hackers attempted to increase the levels of lye in the water. Fortunately, the attempt was noticed and thwarted, but it served as a stark reminder of the vulnerability of our water systems. So what can be done to prevent such attacks? The answer lies in robust cybersecurity measures. Municipalities must invest in state-of-the-art security software and hardware. They should also conduct regular vulnerability assessments and penetration testing to identify and fix potential weak points in their systems. Furthermore, training staff to recognize and respond to cyber threats is crucial. After all, the most sophisticated security system can still be compromised by a single click on a malicious email link. In addition, municipalities should have contingency plans in place outlining the steps to be taken in the event of a cyber attack. This can help to minimize disruption and ensure that safe drinking water continues to flow, even in the face of adversity. As technology advances, so do the threats. Cybersecurity and water systems is a pressing concern, but with proactive measures and constant vigilance, we can shield our most precious resource from the clutches of cybercriminals. Now, let's talk strategies. 
How can we ensure our drinking water is safe? First on the list is water storage. It's recommended to store at least a gallon of water per person per day. Aim to have enough for a minimum of two weeks. That's 14 gallons per person. This water should be stored in a cool, dark place to maintain its quality. Next, consider investing in a high-quality water filtration system. These systems can significantly reduce the presence of contaminants, including PFAS, lead, and other heavy metals. They can also filter out microbial pathogens, ensuring your tap water is safe to drink. Boiling water is a tried and true method for purifying water. It kills most types of disease-causing organisms, so ensure you have a reliable heat source and a suitable container for boiling water. Remember, when in doubt, boil it out. Water purification tablets or drops are another handy tool in your prepper arsenal. They're compact, easy to use, and effective against many waterborne pathogens. Keep a supply in your emergency kit, your car, and your backpack. Don't overlook alternative water sources. Rainwater, nearby streams, or even snow can be treated and used for drinking. But remember, always treat water from these sources before drinking it, even if it looks clean. Keeping up to date with cybersecurity threats to water systems is also crucial. Cyber attacks can disrupt water supply and treatment processes. So it's essential to stay informed and take necessary precautions to protect your water sources. Lastly, regular testing of your stored water and home water supplies is a good practice. Testing kits are readily available and easy to use. They can identify a range of chemical and microbial contaminants, helping you ensure your water is safe to drink. That's it. Now you have a game plan to ensure your drinking water is safe. Remember, these strategies are not just for doomsday scenarios. They can be used in everyday life to protect you and your family from the risks associated with drinking water. Being prepared isn't about fear, it's about survival. And water, safe drinking water, is key to that survival. We've covered a lot of ground today on the topic of water. This life-sustaining resource, so often taken for granted, can also be a source of potential risks, as we've seen. We've discussed contaminants such as PFAS, fluoride, and microbial pathogens that can pose health threats. We've also highlighted the very real danger of cyber attacks on municipal water systems, which could disrupt our water supply and treatment processes. The new EPA limits on PFAS levels and the ongoing debates about fluoride in our drinking water are just some of the many issues we need to stay informed about. Water weaponization, particularly against farmers, is another disturbing trend. The importance of understanding these complexities cannot be overstated as we all have a stake in ensuring that our water is safe to drink. We've also delved into the risks of drinking tap water with its potential chemical contaminants and aging infrastructure. The dangers of microbial pathogens such as Cryptosporidium, E. coli, and Legionella are real, and it's vital that we take steps to protect ourselves and our families. For those who want to be prepared, we've shared several strategies. Storing at least one gallon of water per person per day for a minimum of two weeks is a good start. Investing in high-quality water filtration systems, having a reliable method to boil water, and keeping a supply of water purification tablets or drops are also wise moves. Identifying and treating alternative water sources such as rain water or nearby streams can provide additional security. And let's not forget about the importance of cybersecurity awareness and regular testing of our water supplies for contaminants. Remember, knowledge is power. Stay informed, stay prepared, and most importantly, stay hydrated safely.